Hello, my name is Dr. Robert Palmerson. I am a clinical hematologist and I'm also active in the Iceland Screens, Treats or Prevents Multiple Myeloma study group. On behalf of the iStop MM study team, I would like to present to you our abstract called Transient M Proteins, Epidemiology, Causes and the Impact of Mass Spectrometry, the iStop MM study. Monoclonal gammapathy of undetermined significance or MQS is defined as the presence of a monoclonal M protein or monoclonal free light chain without meeting the criteria for multiple myeloma, smoldering myeloma, or other lymphoproliferative disorders. The prevalence is around 5%, and symptomatic myeloma is always preceded by MCUS. The risk for progression is around 1% each year, and it is diagnosed by performing serum protein electrophoresis, immunofixation electrophoresis, or by measuring free light chains. The use of mass spectrometry in evaluating M protein was reviewed by the International Myeloma Working Group last year, and they concluded that it could be used in place of immunofixation, help distinguishing therapeutic antibodies from endogenous, such as in daratumab treated myeloma patients. But further data was needed to test for MD negativity in peripheral blood and guide bone marrow testing. So how do we perform mass spectrometry and look for M proteins? Well, we take a serum sample and add isotype specific paramagnetic beads to the solution. Then we run it through the mass spectrometer and get a so-called spectrograph, which you can see on this slide with normal serum on the left-hand side and a spectrograph positive for IgG kappa on the right-hand side. So what the mass spectrometer actually does is that it defines the molecular weight of different antibody molecules in the serum and the amount of each molecule. It can thereby identify if there's too much of a specific antibody molecule, which we call an M protein. The use of mass spectrometry in identifying M protein has been studied previously. The PROMISE study analyzed over 7,000 individuals who were deemed to be at high risk for developing myeloma and related disorders. There, they observed that around 10% of individuals had the M protein over 0.2 grams per liter, according to mass spectrometry. The cutoff of 0.2 grams per liter is roughly the same as we see with immunofixation. But they also observed a lower value of M protein in 26% of individuals with a size between 0.015 and 0.2 grams per liter. The Olmsted County study identified 300 individuals who did not have MCUS at baseline according to SPAP, but developed it later on. They went back to the original biobank baseline samples and performed immunofixation, which turned positive in 10% of cases compared to 50% when analyzed with mass spec. This indicates that MCUS can be detected earlier by mass spectrometry compared to conventional SPAP or immunofixation. Among clinicians, it's well known that the identification of an M protein may disappear at a later time point, which we choose to call a transient M protein. However, there is no information from a systematic study investigating patterns of transient M proteins in a prospectively monitored cohort. In one long-term follow-up study of nearly 1,400 individuals with MCUS, the M protein became undetectable in 5% of cases, and in most of these cases, it was suspected to be due to therapy for an unrelated disorder. Another study identified 36 individuals with transient M protein and observed increased prevalence of immunological disorders in these individuals. We know of conditions that have been associated with transient M protein, such as post-infectious, which is of course not very strange, and also inflammatory disorders. We sometimes observe these transient M proteins after solid organ and hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. So the aim of the current study is to describe the prevalence of transient M proteins within the prospective ISTOP MM screening study and further examine the transient M proteins size and isotype. We want to evaluate possible causes of the transient M protein and perform mass spectrometry in the whole transient cohort, both at baseline and at follow-up, and correlate with SPAP or IFE. So what did we do? Well, we identified all individuals with an M protein within the ISTOP MM study where the M protein disappeared at a later time point. We evaluated possible underlying causes by designing a 4 to 1 match nested case control study from within the ISTOP MM MGUS cohort and compared the M protein characteristics and patient demographics, prior diagnosis and cancer diagnosis, 
and also prescribed medication from less than one year to one month after the subject tested negative. And we performed mass spectrometry with accent from the binding site in all individuals at baseline and at follow-up with a cutoff of 0.02 grams per liter considered as positive. We did this to confirm the original M protein, analyze if mass spectrometry can pick up M proteins that were not detected on SPEP or IFE, and find the true prevalence of transient M proteins according to mass spectrometry. The ISTOP MM study is a large prospective population based screening study for MGUS in Iceland, where just over 50% of the population over the age of 40 was enrolled, and the vast majority of these individuals were sampled at a later time point. The study identified 3,460 individuals with an M protein, and these individuals were enrolled in a randomized controlled clinical trial with respect to follow up, and ARM2 and 3 underwent follow up sampling, and they comprised the study cohort here. We excluded individuals with a light chain MCUS and ended up with a total of 2,037 individuals with an M protein. So, if we take another look at the transient M protein cohort, then they are defined as individuals with a positive SPEP or IFE at baseline, but negative at follow up. There we found 198 individuals and they comprise the transient M protein cohort. And we went back and performed mass spectrometry in these samples and wanted to know if this transients might be related to the analyzing method chosen. Here we look at the demographics in the transient cohort versus regular MCUS. The median size of the M protein in the transient group was 1.6 grams per liter compared to 2.3 in the MCUS cohort. Here we examine the prevalence of various diseases in the transient M protein group compared to MGUS controls. We observed a significantly increased prevalence of acute infection, autoimmune disorders, obstructive pulmonary condition, and cancer in the transient cohort compared to that of MGUS. We also evaluated the use of medication in the transient M protein cases versus the MGUS controls. We evaluated a total of 34 different medication groups and observed a significantly increased usage of oral corticosteroids, immunosuppressive medication, azithromycin, and actually diuretics in the transient cohort compared to MGUS. If we now take a look at the mass spectrometry results, we again have 198 individuals in the transient M protein group with a median follow up between testing of 238 days. In 8% of cases, the mass spectrometry was completely negative at baseline, but in 92% of cases, we identified an M protein. At follow-up testing with a median of 243 days of follow-up, mass spectrometry identified the same M protein in 70% of cases, so they were not transient at all, at least not according to mass spec. In 30% of cases, with a median follow-up of 234 days, we did not observe the same M protein at follow-up. These individuals were judged to have transient M proteins according to mass spectrometry. So when using SPEP or IFE for diagnosing M proteins, we observed a prevalence of 9.7% of transient proteins within the ISTOP MM study cohort. But when analyzing these individuals with mass spectrometry and using that as the benchmark, the prevalence was 2.6%. Of the 70% of individuals who had a persistent M protein at baseline and at follow up, according to MASPEC, and were therefore not truly transient, according to MASPEC, we found the same isotype in 44% of cases, the same isotype plus other M proteins in 41%, but in 15% of cases, we did not have the same isotype on mass spectrometry as on immunofixation. We observed a certain degree of disconcordance between mass spectrometry and immunofixation. For example, we had 15 individuals who were positive with conventional methods, but negative with mass spec. Of these 15 individuals, 10 had quantifiable M protein with a median of 2.0 grams per liter. 12 out of 15 of these individuals had various diseases that might be associated with transient M protein at the time of diagnosis, such as active infection, autoimmune diseases requiring therapy or active cancer. But three individuals had no obvious reason for the M protein, but all were weak and non-quantifiable according to SPEP or IFE. So we conclude 
that within the I stop MM study, a large prospective population based screening study for MGUS, that we observed the M protein to be transient in almost 10% of cases when measured with conventional methods. Using the more sensitive mass spectrometry, the proportion of transient M protein was only 2.6%. Most individuals with transient M proteins based on SPEP or IFE are falsely negative when using mass spectrometry as a benchmark and transient M proteins are often only below the limit of detection compared to conventional SPEP or IFE. So thank you for your attention and I would, be thank, would like to thank our collaborators and especially the binding sites for help within this study.